Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, welcome back. Excuse the beard, I'm a bit more beardy than I usually am. I'm trying it out. Um, it's a holiday season so I don't need to go into the office so much. Um, it's a bit itchy but maybe I'll be a bit more beardy into the next year, who knows. So, as I've been thinking about this YouTube channel and the type of content I want to make, um, I've come up with a list of ideas, about 60 so far. I've listed them out on a spreadsheet. So things that I want to film or bring to you in the next year that I'm quite excited about. Um, it's a mixture of lifestyle content, reviews and how-to guides. Um, I'd quite like to make the reviews at either the 6 month or 12 month mark. At that point I feel like I've fully understood the product and I've got an opinion on it and I can bring to you a more useful review. In compiling this list I realised my mobile phone is now 14 months old so I thought I'd give you a quick review of it. A few people have um, teased me a little bit on why I don't have an iPhone, so I thought I'd review my mobile phone and talk about why I don't have an iPhone. So someone recently sent me this video. Hey sir, are you where you're parked in a handicap spot? It's okay, I have an Android. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were disabled. So props to the makers of that video, it's very funny. If anyone knows who made it, then please let me know so I can credit it. I don't want to get sued by another American for copyright infringement. Um, yes, that's happened to me before. Um, I'll cover that in another video, so that's probably 61 videos I need to make. Um, so I've been on Android since 2014 and I've had my current phone since October 2018. So it's about time I gave it a review. So what phone do I have now? I have an Honor Play 64 gigabyte Android phone. So who are Honor? Well, Honor is a sister brand of Huawei. Huawei are now 18.6% of the worldwide phone market share. And Honor are their sister brand which is targeted more at the mid-range and affordability sector. So how much was my Honor phone? Well, I've still got the receipt in the box, I think. Yeah. So I paid $279.95 for this phone. The camera to focus on that. Right. So if I remember rightly, it was pretty much a free phone. Um, when I say free, my previous phone, a Nokia 7, had broken. The microphone had broken. I sent it off for repair with Carphone Warehouse. They lost it. Uh, eventually, they refunded me the full cost of the Nokia 7. So with the money I had from that, I was able to purchase the Honor phone, um, so it felt like a free phone. So where did I buy my phone from? Well, I bought it from Argos, um, which feels a little bit strange to me. I worked in Argos as a student, and I've got nothing bad to say about Argos. Um, it was actually quite a fun place to work. Um, but when I was a student, you wouldn't buy technology from Argos. They've obviously sorted out their ranging and their buying, because... In recent years I bought quite a bit from Argos, um, they seem to have the latest tech these days, they seem to have quite competitive prices, and since Argos have put stores into um, Sainsbury's, you can always get to an Argos quite easily, and now I find myself quite often buying technology from uh, my local Argos, which is in my local Sainsbury's, because I do my local food shop and it's convenient just to go and pick up something from that location. So why did I buy an Honor Play? Well, when I was looking for a new phone to replace my Nokia, I needed a phone that had uh, all the same specs or better. Um, the Honor Play fit that bill. Uh, one of the key features I wanted was a USB-C. Um, sounds a bit tight, but I had lots of uh, adapters and leads and stuff existing in the USB-C format, and I didn't want to go back to the older micro USB standard. Um, the Honor Play it simply was a great phone at a great price. It's got a GPU turbo technology, which um, I don't fully understand, but the phone is actually aimed at gamers. And from my experience with PCs in the past, um, if you play PCs, you know you need quite a high spec to run the latest games. So if a phone is aimed at gamers, uh, typically cost conscious, maybe children who are into gaming, then I knew the phone was going to be quite high spec and quite good for everyday usage. So what are the specs of the Honor Play? Well, 
it's got 64 gigabytes of storage which is great if you've had 64 gigabytes you don't want to go backwards you want to be able to store the same amount of apps or the same amount of photos or if not a bit more it's got a 16 megapixel back camera and a 2 megapixel uh, front facing camera uh, it's got the dual cameras on the back so it can do depth of field which is good because my last Nokia 7 did excellent depth of field maybe even a little bit better than the bokeh effects you get from the honor phone uh, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM I don't really know why it's important but I guess it's for multitasking it's I had 4 gigabytes of RAM on my last phone so it's good to maintain that level it's got a headphone jack so um, not as important these days um, it was a feature I wanted at the time but now these days I just use Bluetooth headphones so so it's a nice to have feature but I don't think it's essential um, it's got AI photography um, most of the Honor phones have AI photography it's actually quite a good feature it's really impressive how it will recognize objects and it will um, tailor the camera settings for the type of object so if you're taking a picture of some food or a nature scene or a plant or a person then it will set up the camera appropriately for what it's looking at um, for an, someone who like myself who uh, isn't really an expert on photography then it's great um, it's dual sim so um, I've got a work sim card and a home sim card so I don't really want to carry two phones around so it's great to be able to put both sim cards in the one phone uh, it's got the USB-C connector um, which is great because it's such a I'm a real fan of the format and my laptop and my phone both use USB-C for charging so that means when I go on holiday I only need to take one charger for both devices um, at the moment the phone's got MU uh, let's have a look yeah software update let's have a look so it's got MU or EMU not quite sure how you pronounce it version 9.1.0 which is um, a bit of reflection there yeah so it's got the version 9 of the emu mu however you say it on a software on there and that is based it's essentially it's on on huawei's version of android 9 um i know android 10 is the latest but um being one down is not too bad i guess so how do you unlock the Honor phone? Well, pretty much the same way you unlock any phone these days. It's got facial recognition, so if you turn it on and look at it, uh, it unlocks instantly. Uh, it's also got the kind of standard uh, fingerprint reader on the back there. So why did I choose an Honor phone? Well, I was a fan of OnePlus, but um, they went a bit more mainstream, and when they became a bit more popular, um, it's obviously good for them, wasn't so good for myself or early adopters because their prices went up. Uh, when Google um, stopped making the Nexus phones and started making the Pixel phones, then uh, the prices of the Pixels went up. Um, and then I guess Honor and Huawei are probably my favourite uh, main kind of Chinese brands at the moment. Um, I think they rock. They represent great value for money. Uh, they've got the same componentry as all the other phones. So I think they're a great place to look if you're looking for a phone today. So talking about phone componentry, there's a really great video by Strange Parts where he assembles his own iPhone. I'll link to it in the description below. But if you go and watch that video, you'll see what I mean. He goes into the markets in China, he buys all the separate components and he assembles his own iPhone. Just the way you could buy the separate parts and assemble your own Android phone. iPhones are nothing special, they're just a bunch of componentry, the same as any other phone. So why do I have an Android phone and not an iPhone? Well, um, one of the reasons is the cost. Um, new iPhones are very expensive. I like to buy my phones outright and have a SIM-free contract um, for flexibility. So um, I looked on the Apple Store today and their cheapest phone is £409, which is the iPhone 8 which is two and a bit years old. So um, yeah, the cost of owning iPhones is just a bit prohibitive, particularly if you like to go SIM free like myself. Um, 
the planned obsolescence on Apple phones I think is ridiculous. The I used to get really excited for the new iOS features, but then gradually you just see your phone and your iPad get slower and slower and slower. Um, I've not seen any slowdown like that with uh, Android updates. So what do I like about Android? Well, it's just as user-friendly as iOS. And if you bought into the um, Google ecosystem like I have, I've got quite a few Google Homes about the place. Um, it's good to stay in that kind of ecosystem so it all just works. Like if you've got an Android phone, you can just type into Google, where is my phone? I know in uh, iOS they have this ability for the app and for an iCloud account, but in Google you can literally just type in where is my phone into the Google address bar and it will tell you where your phone is. It all just works very seamlessly. Um, and having come from the kind of iPhone ecosystem and moved across, I set up my Android phone very much like my iPhone was set up. So uh, I just have kind of apps on the desktop. So um, yeah, just as easy to use as an iPhone. Now with uh, both phones, you can tinker under the hood. I did jailbreak my iPhone at one point to get access to uh, other app stores and to a bit more functionality to be honest it left the iPhone a bit messy um, I think if you've got an iPhone you're better off just keeping it sort of standard but for someone like myself who does like to tinker uh, it is quite a lockdown ecosystem and I have rooted my Android phone but I've actually found that having a rooted Android phone and versus not having a rooted Android phone um, you can tinker with Android so much anyway, um, most of the time, unless you're into kind of hacking the memory addresses of games to give yourself more lives, then there isn't much reason to have a rooted Android phone. It gives so much flexibility. Um, one great thing about having an Android phone is you can install unsigned apps, which um, probably, you know, potentially isn't safe but if you know where that app has come from then it's not too much of a big deal like I've actually made my own app which um, it just loads there it just shows the latest, latest Forex news all it does is load a particular web page that I like going to but it's just nice to have that in kind of app format um, and that was easy to make obviously I didn't want to go through the hassle of putting an app into the App Store or the Google Play Store uh, just for myself. Um, I made the app just for myself. So uh, it's kind of nice to be able to just install that on my phone and not have to worry. And also to be able to circulate that package and other people can install it if they want to. Um, I'm not sure you can do that with an iPhone. It's been a while since I've had an iPhone, so I'm not exactly sure what you can and can't do with regards to installing unsigned apps. Um, Google also give you free credit. Uh, there's an app called Google Opinions. Um, what Google Opin Opinions is, uh, it gives you little surveys and little questionnaires. Uh, well, actually, it's since been called Google Rewards. So there you go, uh, you can see Google Rewards. I've got about £2.74 on my balance on my Google Play Store at the moment. And if I actually go to my reward history, uh, you can see my total earned is about £63, which oh, £62.32, so that's pretty good. So you install the Google Rewards app from the Google Play Store and it just pops up with little surveys. Uh, they take about 30 seconds to fill out. It's usually, for me, the questions are, have you been to the shop? Did you buy anything in the shop? Not quite sure whether they want to know that, but I guess maybe it's just research or helps them sort of give them some analytics on their sort of Google Pay system. But um, answering those little surveys, your Google Play credit um, um, increases. And actually, I've bought, actually, most of the times I've needed to buy something from the Play Store, whether it's a paid version of an app, um, a book, a film. Actually, I can't think of the. There's only a few times I've had to use my actual, you know, my actual bank account to purchase. Most of the time, because I do the Google uh, Rewards app, I've always got a balance in my Google Play Store that allows me to go and buy stuff without 
having to use real money. So that's that's a real benefit of Android. Um, again, not sure if Apple is an equivalent. So what do I like about the Honor Play phone? Well, because of its 3,750 milliamp hour battery, even now 14 months into ownership, its battery lasts for a day or a day and a half. And because of the relatively cheap purchase price, I don't worry about it too much. What's my tip for buying an Android phone? Well, my tip would be to don't buy an Android phone that's too cheap. Although they can be cheaper, don't go for the real budget ones. Go for a mid-range to flagship. If you go for a budget Android phone, you probably will be disappointed. So the last time I owned an iPhone was the end of 2013, and that was an iPhone 4. So what have I owned since then? Um, well, my Android started with a Google LG Nexus 5. Um, that was a great phone. That's when um, Google... This is before the Pixel phones, when Google worked with other hardware manufacturers to make the Google phones. The Nexus 5 was made by LG, and it was a great phone. It was a great entry into Android, and honestly, I think I might still be using this phone if today if it wasn't for the battery life. Um, the battery life was actually quite poor on it. It didn't last very long. So from that phone, I changed and I bought a OnePlus, or a OnePlus Model 2. Um, that phone was great, um, that was at the point where you could only buy from OnePlus if you had an invite. I uh, applied and managed to get an invite to buy a OnePlus phone, it was great, you felt like you were part of an exclusive club. Um, that phone lasted for a couple of years and, and was great as well, um, OnePlus went a bit mainstream after that, uh, you can buy a OnePlus anywhere these days, most people have heard of them. But um, that phone just stopped charging whilst I was on holiday one day in the Cotswolds. Um, you could no longer charge it, it was a bit, bit of an issue. Uh, so I rushed out on the holiday in the Cotswolds and bought myself a Nokia 7. Um, it's nice to see Nokia re-entered the phone market. The Nokia 7 lasted um, about, well, it lasted a year. It had to be repaired twice in that year. Uh, both times the um, microphone stopped working. The second time this microphone stopped working, I took it back. Carphone Warehouse sent it off for repair. Carphone Warehouse unfortunately lost it, or maybe in my case it wasn't unfortunate because they refunded me the full cost of the phone. And then I bought my Honor Play. So, um, yeah, maybe uh, you could say perhaps Android phones don't last as long as iPhones. I don't know. Um, but if you're buying... Uh, sort of mid-range Android phones then changing them every couple of years I guess is not too much of a hassle. So would I recommend you buy an Honor Play uh, mobile phone today? Well I've had it for 14 months so it's getting a bit long in the tooth now so I wouldn't recommend you buy the exact model that I have today but I would recommend Honor or Huawei if you're looking for good value for money um, or if you're looking for even better value for money, uh, I would recommend going on to a forum like Hot UK Deals. Have a look at the um, postings for Xiaomi uh, kind of Redmi type phones. Um, probably what I plan to do next is purchase a lesser known Chinese brand like Xiaomi. Uh, purchase it on a website like Gear Best or... Alibaba, if you don't know those websites, those websites allow you to buy direct from Chinese wholesalers and you'll be able to import a phone which will have a lot of functionality but you'll pay prices which are more akin to what, uh, the, pro what the price is they pay in China. So how would I rate the durability of the Honor Play? Well, considering I had a Nokia um, for a year and that had to be fixed twice, and my OnePlus phone before that broke. After 14 months, I've had no issues with this phone. I've dropped it quite a few times. Um, I've not exactly looked after it, and it's been really, really robust so far. So touch wood, it will uh, continue to last a bit longer. Um, it did come with this uh, clear plastic clay case. Well, I say clear plastic, it's a bit smoky now. Um, yeah. So, but, and it's also getting a tiny bit saggy, but the case is protected quite well. 
Um, I also like the case because it allows me to keep my gym pass in there so I can scan that through the case. Um, yeah, the durability has been brilliant actually. Um, feels like a really solidly well built phone. So how much would I get for my Honor Play if I traded it in today? Well, Mazuma don't even want it and Envirophone would give me £10, so not very much. I guess £10 is the cost of the raw materials when it's recycled. Um, perhaps that's something to factor into buying an Android phone. Um, they also don't have the residual value that iPhones have, but they also don't have the high initial purchase price either, so I think that's about even. Thank you for watching the review of my Honor Play phone. Hopefully it's been a useful insight for you. Perhaps it's um, given you some insight over why someone might consider an Android phone over an iPhone. Um, if you like this content and want to see more from me, please subscribe.